In every discovery, there is trial and there is error. There is experimentation and there is failure. And sometimes we're just plain wrong. Even the best discoveries come from an idea that's really spaced out. In a little town in Great Britain, no, say around 1643, Isaac Newton, that's right, the apple on the noggin guy was born. Isaac was a thinker, a doer, and quite the smarty titian. Born into a farming family, he was more philosopher than farmer, so he was sent to Cambridge to study preaching. At the university, he fell in love with mathematics. I mean, who doesn't? He proposed many of today's globally accepted laws of physics, the likes of which he could not possibly even have tested. Isaac was the man. Isaac's buddy and fellow scientist, Edmund Haley, yeah, the Haley's comic guy, Haley suggested Isaac publish his findings, so he did in the Philosophe Naturalis Principia Mathematica. Isaac explored three basic laws of motion. The first law related to inertia. You know that feeling you get when you're sitting on the sofa in front of the TV with the remote? You ain't never getting up. I've been there. In other words, bodies at rest tend to stay at rest. Bodies in motion tend to stay in motion. That was Law one. Well, hello, Mrs. Full of Herself. Can we get back to Isaac, please? Isaac was saying the force is dependent not only upon how fast an object is accelerating, but also how massive the object is. Ever been up at bat and been hit by a pitch in baseball? <laughs> Hurts a little, doesn't it? Now, imagine a bowling ball flying straight at your head. Even though they both have the same acceleration, the force of the bowling ball is gonna be a lot greater because its mass is greater. What I'm talking about is Newton's third law. Goes a little something like this. What makes a sprinkler spin when you turn on the water? It's the same basic principle that makes a rocket rise from the earth. It's called a reaction. Every action has a reaction. The action of a boy's jump has a reaction that moves the wagon. So every action generates an opposite and equal reaction. Let's leap ahead in time, shall we? Say, 1920. Using the laws of Newton, an American rocket scientist, Dr. Robert Goddard, wrote a book about rocket prototypes. He proposed that a rocket could land on the moon. The funny thing is, Goddard's moon proposal was intended to show the possibility of rocket engineering and physics. But he never said he was ready to launch. Oh, man, and the papers had a field day castigating him for his spaced out theories. Just like I'm probably gonna get castigated for using the word castigate. Jeez. A big mucky muck New York Times editorial expressed complete disbelief. Wow, so they were basically saying that Goddard and Newton didn't even know what their own theories meant. Ouch, that's pretty harsh. As they put it, Goddard had developed his theories as intentional mistakes or oversights. Man, that is pouring one tall glass of Newton Haterade. The naughty New York Times then went so far as to say Goddard seems to lack the knowledge ladled out daily in high school. Just a few years later in 1926, he launched the world's first liquid-fueled rocket. He was a visionary in his field, but he was ridiculed for his advanced theories. Decades later, he's considered one of the fathers of modern rocketry. One more leap ahead. Follow me. Tally ho. There is this little matter of Apollo 11, the rocket that landed on the moon, not to mention shot out of the Earth's atmosphere. Everything the earlier editorial in the New York Times claimed was high school thinking. They summarized that critical 1920 editorial about Goddard that claimed that Newtonian law was bunk, then wrote an apology. Since he died in 1945, rocket pioneer Goddard will not return my calls. But Isaac is like, oh yeah, it's my birthday. It's my party. I'm the man. I discovered gravity. And that's what we call spaced out.